in high-grade neuronic carcinomas, they have a lot of similarities to uh, non-small cell lung cancer and melanoma. So what I mean by that is um, these are tumors that have what we call high mutational burden. So when you look at the genes, um, a lot of them are damaged. And um, it stands to reason that at least in other therapies or in other cancers where there has been a really nice response, those cancers tended to have a high mutational burden. So it makes a lot of sense to consider these therapies in high-grade neuronic carcinoma. So for example, a type of neuronic carcinoma that's high grade is a small cell lung cancer and there's been very promising therapy that's already published and so now there's phase three trials there so in other high grade neuronic carcinomas that don't necessarily start in the lung we think it's a real good option to consider in addition actually when you look at different immunotherapies that have been used over the years one of the most common and earliest immunotherapies was actually a drug called interferon and interferon is it's a quite toxic drug um, it makes the patients feel like they have the flu and they can have fevers and chills so um, many of us don't like to use it, but there was some activity there. And so the question is, you know, do we have other immunotherapies that we've used for our disease? And the answer is yes. We don't use it as commonly because of the side effect profile, but it stands to reason that it makes a lot of sense to consider immunotherapy for our disease.